I'm not a huge fan of Halloween, but I couldn't resist knitting these gorgeous little tiny pumpkins. And I'm going to show you how to knit the larger one. So before we begin knitting, I have a cup of coffee in my But First coffee mug. I have lit the most gorgeous little candle from a sh local shop in my town called Izzy Loops. I think they've got a website and this is English Pear and Freesia. Oh, and it is gorgeous. I do believe that when you're doing something like knitting, it should be a sensory experience. Anyway, last year I knit a couple of pumpkins. Um, and I followed the pattern by Susan B. Anderson for uh, the Fall Harvest Charm set. And this is the little pumpkin here. Mine don't look like that because I don't think I've done this little bit aggressively enough. It's called tufting. And um, this size of pumpkin here follows her pattern. Obviously, I'm not going to share that with you because it is a paid pattern. What I will do, I'll link to her um, purchase options down below but I thought yes these are nice and you can see they sit in the palm of my hand but what if I wanted one slightly bigger but still in fine yarn so I've worked out my own little pattern which I'm going to share with you now just to also show you this is like one that I made last year out of cotton I think it's cotton glacé rowan cotton glacé yarn um, Obviously, if you used a heavier weight yarn and, and bigger needles, you'd get a bigger pumpkin. But anybody that knows me knows that I like little teeny tiny things. I've also mentioned in my introduction that I'm not a huge fan of Halloween. I'm not. I'll be sitting here on the 31st of October, all the lights off as if nobody's home. Uh, the door will be locked and I won't answer it to anybody. So, yes, I'm a real bar humbug. I don't know what it is. I just don't like the idea of children wandering in the streets, knocking on strangers' doors, asking for sweets. Um, I let my kids go trick-or-treating when they were younger. Um but with with adult supervision you know um but no i i really don't like it anyway i am using most wonderful yarn from um elderflower stitches most of these have come out of last year's yarn advent i'm using them using them to knit my northeasterly blanket um and i just thought I don't like garish colours. What about nice little soft pumpkins for home decor? So this is what I'm using and I'm going to use this colourway for today's demonstration. I've got a lovely piece of paper for my little backdrop here and um, I'll show you the process but put you on fast forward for some of it. So I'm going to do a long tail cast on which I learnt last year and apologies for my fingers um, they are clean they are scrupulously clean but I've been um, working with alcohol ink and yeah my, my fingers are stained anyway what you want to do is um, I don't know what gauge these needles are they won't be bigger than 2.75 um, obviously if I used a smaller needle I'd get an even smaller pumpkin so we're aiming for a slightly larger pumpkin than Susan's medium sized one and I want to cast on 12 stitches and I'm just casting them onto one needle this is the way that I like to do um, knitting in the round I, I always struggle with the first couple of rounds so if anybody's got any hints or tips for me that would be most marvellous so comment down below what's your attitude to Halloween will you be going all out will you have coffins and skeletons in your front garden will you be all lit up like Blackpool Tower are you going to be answering the door to kids and do you 
trick them or do you just give treats? Let's see how many stitches we've got. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. So we can just knock that one off. Now, because doing small things like this, I'm not very good at not twisting my yarn. So I'm just going to knit my first row on one needle before I join it together. And again, you see this first stitch <laughs> I'm having trouble with. I don't know whether I'm doing my long tail cast on correctly. Um, it seems to work, but it's just this first stitch is a bit fiddly and I hope that I'm in shot for you. There we go, that's the first one done. And um, I will leave a link to Susie, who is Elderflower Stitches down below. Uh, she's a lovely knitter and um i've had a few projects um not projects i've had a few yarn kits from her and um, i think i had the mother's day kit i've just recently purchased the september tea sock club which i'll be sharing in my next woolly pod but her speciality is um dyeing really lovely pastel colours and the base that she uses is really soft and those of you that have seen my northeasterly blanket in progress uh, it's it's lovely it's really lovely and every so often I'm sure I've got plenty of yarn from her now to be um, knitting my northeasterly but um, yeah, just every now and then. I think, oh, it needs a little pop of that colour. Let's get that. Um, but I, I love this because it's got the yellows and the oranges in it. Now, at this stage, I've knitted one row. Now, I'm going to put four stitches on each needle. That's one. And again, if anybody has got any hints or tips for when you're working with really small things, how to join in the round better than I'm doing it, that would be very much appreciated. Okay, so I'm just going to now join in the round and I'm going to slip the first stitch of my first needle onto my last needle, being careful not to twist and then the last stitch on the last needle back onto the first needle. Now I'm going to place, if I can find it, just going to place a little marker, one of these little stitch markers here. Susie does the most wonderful stitch markers but um, I'm just going to use this because it's what I've got to hand and that's just going to remind me that this is the start of my round. So I've knit one row what I'm going to do now is knit front and back into every stitch so there will be 24 stitches in total, 8 stitches on each needle. Let's just move that down. Knit front and back into every stitch so we're increasing. Hopefully you can see. It's been the most beautiful day here today. We've had some quite heavy, sharp showers. I think Sunday it rained an awful lot um, and there were warnings of um, flooding. We had thunderstorms as well, most amazing lightning in the sky. Yesterday was an okay day, um, and but today is absolutely beautiful. I did put the heating on when I got up this morning, but it's off now. And I've been out um, to the post office and posted some things. It's my um, youngest daughter's birthday today. She's 20. But I shan't see her because she's at uni. Oh, my candle is smelling absolutely divine. Coming up to the last needle in the round now. I'm just knitting front and back in every stitch. And this is a useful little construction technique for
for adding um, dimension. I've got a very long tail there, I don't need that. Um, yes, so knitting front and back. So I will have 24 stitches in total. And the last one. That's where we joined in the round. It's a little bit tricky. Front and back. And then just give your working yarn a little tug as you're coming on to the next needle. So what I need to now do is just knit a row. And I'll just do a little chat with you. So, um, yes, as I say, Halloween, I, I think one of the things that puts me off is all the garish colours. I'm not a bright orange person in terms of my home decor. I'm not a purple person in terms of my home decor. Um, or black, or they're saying that my sofa in my living room is black. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know whether it's the colour palette that we traditionally associate with Halloween. It's all those greens, oranges, purples and blacks, isn't it? And um, I think as I get older, yeah, certainly in my paper crafting, I like a nice bright colour palette from time to time. But I think in terms of my home decor, I much prefer a neutral colour palette but with little pops of colour. Um, so my kitchen, for example, is predominantly cream. My uh, table and chairs are cream and my kitchen units are cream. Um, but, and I've got a cream leather sofa, which in the kitchen is maybe not the best idea. Um, but I've got pops of kind of teal blue and lime green to kind of just add a little bit of interest. I'm loving this uh, orange and pink on here. It's getting me thinking about doing some backgrounds. So we're just coming on to this next. So I will now have 16 stitches per needle, which is 48 stitches in total. And I will be doing a woolly pod very soon because I have got stuff to show. I've blocked my rainbow jumper, as some people are calling it, my Yohi Locatelli V-neck boxy. I've blocked that and I've worn it once. It's actually been too warm to wear it. Um, but I'm quite pleased with it. It's not perfect. There are imperfections. I finished the hat with ear flaps that I started for my sister's Christmas present. So I'll be showing that in the Aldi yarn. There we go. So what I need to do now, and um, this is where I'll probably put you on fast forward. I need to knit seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and purl one, and repeat that across the round. Knit seven, and purl one across the round. And the little purl stitch is going to give us our track when we tuft our pumpkin. So I'll speed you up now, have a slurp of my coffee and I'll be back when we've got something interesting to talk about.
so it took me about 20 minutes to knit these 15 rounds and now we need to decrease so what I'm going to do is across the first round I'm going to knit five knit two together and purl one I'm going to do that across the whole round knit two together purl one so this will give us our kind of um spherical shape if you like so on the second needle knit five knit two together and we're keeping our pattern intact by purling in the right place And it is continuing to be the most glorious day. Um, I'm glad I went out in it, that's for sure. And there were pumpkins up in Aldi. So I think what I might do um, in the next couple of days is make a really nice pumpkin soup, maybe. Or certainly a butternut squash soup. I don't know whether the pumpkins that they sell for decorating are good enough to eat they probably are but i've got some nice little recipes i want to try out um i think there's a butternut squash apple and cider soup so i've done that now across this round i'm going to knit six purl one because i've decreased one stitch on each needle or sorry two stitches on each needle so my pattern was knit seven purl one now I need to knit six purl one yes yeah, so I do like this time of year for food there's lots of nice comfort food isn't there what's your favorite dish at this time of year that's hearty and warming I made a Chilean cottage pie recently out of the Sainsbury's magazine which was really interesting so it, was, it, it had minced beef in it like a normal cottage pie but it had spices in like uh, ground cumin and there was something else that I can't quite remember off the top of my head I think it had some chili in it and um, yeah that was really nice a bit of paprika and it had hard boiled eggs in it quartered two hard boiled eggs for four people and then the topping instead of mashed potato was sweet corn that had been mashed which was really nice just um added you know something a little bit different it was very filling So you can see that you can whip these up really quickly. Um, so this is the larger of the three. Now for the next round, I want to knit four, knit two together. So I'm decreasing two stitches on each needle again. One, two, three, four, knit two together, purl one, one, two, three, four knit two together purl one i'm so busy with crafting commitments at the moment i've got quite a lot of commissions on um paper crafting commissions that i'm not really very organized in terms of my cooking this week so i have just bought some ready meals for the next few days i'm, I'm, I'm out for dinner tomorrow it's my knitting night but tonight we're just going to have from aldi they're especially specially selected chicken and chorizo paella with a salad because it's quite mild so you don't need a big hearty meal tonight um and then i've got mr paper and twine a butter chicken curry to have tomorrow because i shall be out for dinner because as i say it's my knitting night 
um, and then Thursday so I don't have to worry about it although I'm out with Woolly Steph for lunch on Thursday which will be lovely um, we've got cottage pie that I can really recommend the Aldi specially selected cottage pie it's not cheap I think it's five pounds for two serves two but it is really tasty so I've got that and some broccoli and some peas and it's got quite a lot of carrots in it so that is what we're going to have on Thursday. So I just haven't got to worry. I can just bung them in the oven um, and yeah, get my jobs done because yeah, it's amazing how quickly time's going. And there was one commission that I had to do in a real hurry um, because the stuff was late from coming over from China. I'm talking a load of drivel today <laughs> okay so now on this I've decreased again so now it is knit five purl one across the round one two three four five and purl one one two three four five and purl one un deux trois quatre cinq i don't know what pearl is in french pearl one <laughs> one two three four five and pearl one and the last needle on this round One, two, three, four, five, pearl one. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque. That's Italian, I think. <laughs> and pearl one, and we're back to the beginning. So next decrease round is knit three. One two three and knit two together purl one so we're still keeping that purl stitch one two three knit two together purl one oh See, this is where i'm not very good as things get smaller on my needles and i've got less stitches i'm a bit cat handed I guess if you didn't want to knit in the round you could um, knit back and forth but obviously you'd have to purl on the wrong side and knit that purl stitch uh, and then you'd have to seam it obviously uh, obviously the beauty of knitting in the round is that there is no making up to do or very little making up to do I should say and I guess if you are a fan of the magic loop method it might be easier than what I'm doing I've never learnt the magic loop is it easy can anybody tell me look and I'm right out of shot <laughs> uh, one two three knit two together purl one one, two, three, knit two together. And I split my yarn there, but never mind, I'll sort that out on the next round. And we're back to the beginning. Now, on this one, now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knit and purl. I'm going to knit two. So I'm doing another decrease row. Knit two, knit two together, and purl one knit two knit two together purl one knit two knit two together purl one i was hoping for this autumn to have done a um, 
garland of the full charm set harvest charm set that susan b anderson has done i mean the acorn and the pine cone look absolutely gorgeous i was going to do them in really nice soft neutral colors but i just just haven't got round to it and it's a bit late now i need to be getting on with my christmas knitting um she has got a christmas charm set i think there are two christmas charm sets actually and i was going to uh, mix mix them up and do them in kind of like a cream yarn with just little flecks of accents in in other colors okay so we're getting to the interesting bit now you can see our pumpkin is forming what i'm going to do now is change color and i want to leave a really big long tail of this to do my tufting with later on so i'm going to do that cut that about there pop that out of the way and i'm going to bring in this now this is a kind of peppermint green i guess but i don't know whether you can see the gorgeous little accents of really beautiful green in there so i'm using that for my stalk and at this point here i'm just going to move my little marker up to the top here as we're going to decrease quite rapidly but at this point I'm going to take my cast on end and I'm going to thread a needle and I'm going to close up the bottom of my pumpkin I am if I can thread my needle <laughs> there we go there we go okay so I'm going to get my fingers inside and you can see I've got a little bit of a hole there where I've increased so I'm just going to take some of these stitches and just gather them to close the bottom at least I hope you can see what I'm doing and uh, it doesn't matter too much here because our tufting is going to form a little pattern at the base anyway try not to get it over your needles Ashley I hope you're enjoying this little tutorial and if you are I would really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up it does really help my channel and if you're not subscribed it would be lovely if you could subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I am next uploading a video I've been a bit sporadic with my uploads recently but I'm hoping to get back into more of a routine and there's something for everybody on this channel here I've got my woolly pod come knit with me playlist I've got my secret diary of a serial dieter which is once every four weeks on a Monday I think the next one is due the 7th of um, November um, I've obviously got my paper crafting um, I've got my coffee shop drivel which I try and do once a week but I, I didn't do one last week I was just a, a bit busy and then just on the wrong side here now I'm just going to do a couple of little closing stitches just to secure that and just chop that off turn this the right side out and I'm going to stuff now not too much um, sorry for the rustling I've got some toy stuffing here um, I don't know where I got it from it might have been from Christie's Bears it's kind of like a heavyweight hollow fibre and I'm it says in the original pattern not to stuff too much but actually I am going to stuff considerably <laughs> because I really want to go for the tufting on this one and you can see that as I've stuffed that now you can see where we've got our pearl stitch and if I need to add more stuffing I can do that as I go along so bringing in my contrast colour now 
don't need to leave too long of a tail now I'm going to continue decreasing and I'm going to knit one let's just bring that over just to okay so I'm going to knit one knit two together purl one and I'm going to repeat that across the round knit one knit two together try not to split your stitches <laughs> it's nothing to do with Susie's beautiful yarn it is my cack handed knitting and you can see that as we're getting less stitches now I'm getting in a bit more of a muddle I'm sure that you are all much better than me at managing your needles. I'm just going to bring that end over there like so. Make sure I'm in shot and um, as I say it is an absolutely glorious day. So that's my first needle. I'm quite proud that I managed to um, kind of what's the word um devise my own little pumpkin knit one knit two together oh no don't split at this stage Ashley knit two together purl one knit one knit two together purl one and then, oh, you see, we've got this lovely bit of bright green coming in now. Love it. This is what I love about Susie's yarns is that um, you've got a predominantly pastel colourway, but then you've got these gorgeous little flashes of brightness that just really make the yarn pop. And it is a lovely um finish as well you know it feels really nice and just pull this okay and I'm just going to now twist those so that I don't get a hole although as I'm decreasing it it, it, it doesn't matter too much and I can sort that out in the making up as it were okay so um, now I'm going to knit across the round so the last couple of rounds I haven't knit but this one I'm going to knit all the way across the round and I'll tell you how many stitches I've got on each needle so I've got one two three four five six I've got six stitches on each needle and I'm not purling anymore so I'm knitting all across the round so my little purl stitch has disappeared and been replaced by a knit stitch I hope you're all um, having a fabulous day and I hope that you'll be inspired to have a go at knitting some of these pumpkins Obviously, I've gone down this pastel colour route, but you could go down whatever colour route you want. And the beauty of this is it uses such a small amount of yarn. Um, yeah. Look, see if we've got that gorgeous little bit of bright green there. And I'm pulling tighter here. So I've knit. Now I'm going to knit two together across each needle, which will leave me with three stitches on each needle. And this is where it gets really fiddly. There we go. Oh. That's three stitches on that needle. And I'm pulling quite tight as I as I come around each needle with my working yarn. Got another little flash of colour coming in in a minute. Knit two together across each needle. There we go. And the last one.
Oh. <laughs> And then on this one, I'm going to do knit one, knit two together. No, actually I'm not. I'm going to do knit two together, knit one. Because, yeah, what I want is two stitches on each needle. Knit two together, knit one. This is where, it, oh, see, this is where it gets really, really fiddly. And actually, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to knit it onto one needle. Knit two together. Knit one. And then on this one here. two together knit one and now I've got six stitches and I'm going to knit those together so that I end up with three stitches two together oh, I'm using the wrong bit of yarn there <laughs> actually do you know what it doesn't really matter knit two together and come back to my main yarn oh and my ball is rolling on the floor and knit two together and I'm going to just pull all of those little ends tight there we go so now what I'm going to do I'm going to knit 12 rows of I-cord so I'm going to shift I've got my working yarn at the left here. I'm going to bring it to the front, move my stitches down, and I'm going to just knit those three stitches so that we're making a little I cord. And then shift your stitches down again and continue knitting and I'm pulling quite tight as I go that's three and judge how long you want it how long you want your little stalk to be I think you're going to need to do a minimum of 10 but I probably wouldn't do more than 12 that's four five six seven eight nine and ten do I want my stalk longer? Yeah, I am going to do just two more. And then 
cast off. So I'm going to do my little cast off row. Cut my yarn. Give myself plenty to work with. Let's move those out of the way. Bring in my darning needle. And just before I thread it up, I'm going to just thread my end through like so. And pull to secure. I can take my little stitch marker off, thread the needle, So this has taken a little bit longer than I expected, but I think in an hour you could do one of these big pumpkins. The ones um, that are a smaller size from Susan B. Anderson, you could probably do in 40 minutes. And my teeny tiny one, which I will just show you in a minute, you could probably do in half an hour. So I reckon an evening's knitting in front of the telly you know you'd get a nice little handful of these done and when you're arranging home decor things like this it's always a good idea to do um, odd numbers so what I'm doing is taking that yarn through the center of the I cord and pulling it through to hide it And I'm pulling it so that I get a little bit of curvature to my stalk, like so. And then I can just, there we go, do a couple of little stitches, hide the end within the body of the pumpkin. like so oh we're nearly done thank you for sticking with me maybe i'll give one of these away if you're still here yeah if you're still here i will give one of these away and i'll tell you which one when we've got them all done okay and I'm just going to close up here where I joined in my new yarn. I've got a little bit of something going on. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring this together where I've got this little hole here. I mean, you're not really going to see it anyway by the time it's um, cinched or tufted. But I love just that little pop of green there. Really lovely. And just again, just take the end into the body of the pumpkin and trim. Now for the really exciting bit, and I'm going to go all out on this one. So you want to take your long bit of yarn. And thread your needle and find one of your pearl tracks, which is here. So you're going to take the yarn and kind of guide it down the pearl track and come up on the opposite side. Put your needle in and go down to the next pearl track. I hope you can see that. And holding that yarn in place on those pearl tracks you're going to pull really tight and can you see how that is cinching in the more you do it the more extreme your pumpkin shape is going to be 
So now I'm going to repeat that and find my other purl track on the opposite side, bring my needle in and come out to the remaining track and pull. Okay, it's really exciting. I love this actually. And then finally, the final one, you're going to come in and here is the last one and I'm going to bring that in, bring my needle out here and pull really tightly and you can see how what was looking like a really big squishy pumpkin now sits in the palm of my hand how lovely is that and to secure that I'm just going to do a couple of stitches and take that down to the bottom of my pumpkin Oh, love it, love it, love it. And again, I can still cinch a bit further and I'm just going to do a couple of little securing stitches at the bottom of my pumpkin here. One more. Look, look at him. I say he's a him. I don't know. I don't know what he is. He's a pumpkin, he hasn't got a gender, but you can see how this one is maybe not as uniform as some of the others. And I could probably have put a little bit more stuffing in, but you know, they're organic. They're not supposed to be perfect, are they? And I'm just gonna bring that through and just out here and trim. there we have a little pumpkin i love it i love it love it love it love it and and it is a bit gnarled it's a bit you know imperfect like me but you get the idea let's bring in the others so these are the big ones that i've made the medium sized ones following Susan B Anderson's pattern and then this teeny tiny one. I'll leave the instructions for how to knit the teeny tiny one in the description box and um, yeah I could have excuse me I could have cinched it more I think but I will give this pumpkin away. If you comment Halloween. If you comment Halloween down below, I will send this. And um, mm, shall I send it internationally? Um, I guess it's not going to be too bad to send internationally. It's quite light, but it will be a small parcel. Yes, I will send it international. So um, I will draw for a winner of this in my next woolly pod, which will probably be going up in the next couple of weeks. I'm sorry it's been a really long video but I do hope that you've enjoyed it and that you will have a go at making these. Thanks so much for watching. Take care everybody. Bye now.